Welcome to Real Food, and today I would like to discuss a very interesting fish um, known as kippers. And um, I may have tried it at some point in the past, but honestly, I could never figure out um, what it is, um, what type of fish this actually is, and, um, and why it looks um, this kind of orangey color. And so today I'm going to try and establish what um, this fish really is, um, what would be the best way to cook it, and um, there is a surprise here, you know, what they say on this packet, um, such as grilling or, or, or oven baking, is not the best way, apparently, to do it. And also, um, I really want to get to the bottom of this and, and really find out what exactly is going on with this fish. So I've got this M&S kippa here. And looking at the ingredients list, you know, I'm trying to, um, it's so small, but let me zoom it all in for you. So it says ingredients, keepers 87%, smoked her herring fish 95%. So so how, ca how can this be 95% herring and 90 and 87% this thing kippers again so what is going on here then we've got other things on the ingredients list um, and these are salt then color E160B brackets to bracket bracket that sounds a little weird and then salted butter well I guess these are the salted pieces of butter 13% and butter milk and salt so I'm now even more confused. So it's 80% kippa and 90% herring, smoked herring. But after doing the research, you know what I've actually discovered? So at the end of the day, this is actually herring. It's herring, but it's, um, I don't know why they call it kippers. I guess this is the specific term for it um, when it's presented in this fashion. But it is herring. But what we need to understand here is that this herring is caught, supposed to be at least caught, in season. And in season means it would be fatty. It will be quite fatty and quite, quite sort of plump and juicy. So, and this season is between May and September, which is quite useful to know. So when it is sold outside season and... and Today is not is is exactly this case. It, we are not in season for keepers. What's going on? This fish could be frozen. It could be caught not in season, and as a result, it won't be as fatty as necessary. And it also features these colorants. And what I mentioned there, this e business e. Let me read that again, so that you know if if you don't want it. So e one sixty b bracket two close bracket. So. So there is a risk that this is not going to be the best kippers, not the fattiest, not not the most, um, not caught in season. But I still want to try it. Another confusing thing I found about them is that if you look at them cooking instructions, they give you grilling and they give you oven baking. But after researching this thoroughly, I found these are not the best ways to actually prepare your kippers. And the best way would be to gently poach it in water, literally for five minutes. You put it in, in boiling water for five minutes and then drain that water and then they're done. So this butter could be handy maybe later to, to place it over over hot hot fish, um, but not necessarily during the, the, the process. So, well, these are the main, um, so I'm gonna go through this. And then I also researched what, what could go well with it. Um, it is recommended as breakfast, um, maybe scrambled eggs, and potentially this is what I'm going to do today. But before actually preparing my scrambled eggs, I am going to have some parsnip. I'm going to, to do this parsnip. So, and parsnip, I find, is a real superfood. I have another video about parsnip. It's really, really nutritious. You know what? You would be surprised how, how much this unremarkable... A root vegetable packs inside itself. It looks like just a, a white root, but it's really full of goodness. And it's relatively easy to cook it, and I, I'm lucky to have one freshly uh, purchased from MS. So, and you know what? I'll show you how easy it is. You literally cut it like this. You can even like cut this and then boil and then drain the water. But what I'm going to do 
I'm actually going to, and I recommend that you do the same, I'm going to peel this um, layer of skin away. Because the reason, you know, these parsnips are grown industrially, I imagine. So what happens, um, there are fertilizers and other chemicals used, and because it's all in the ground, so the outer layer will be more exposed to all these um, chemicals. So by removing them, you are um, really benefiting from um, a, cl a cleaner vegetable. Um, sure, some of it maybe is also making inside the vegetable. I can't really test it. Um, let's hope that this is um, this is not the case. But but by removing this outer layer, um, I think this is a good a good uh, way to um, to improve really uh, the quality. So and it's relatively easy to do. So you can see. So here we are. I'm just going to use one. I'm going to cut this as well. So they, they can be quite hard. Um, but really what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut um, them in smaller pieces and this will make it easy for me to cook them. So um, I wouldn't have to actually um, spend a long time um, boiling or, or frying them. So when these thin pieces are placed inside my frying pan, they will cook really fast. So here we are. So it's going to be these um, fried parsnips and scrambled egg to go with my my keeper breakfast. I like the name keeper, but it turns out to be her herring really, <laughs> and it really should be caught in season. Um, and it looks like um, the one I've got is not in season. Well, never mind. Um, I think it is still going to be a very good, um, good experience because I've researched thoroughly the best ways to cook it. So you're going to benefit from this as well, and you will see what um, what this looks like and what it tastes like. I mean, herring is probably not for everyone. Uh, you know, some people probably don't like it. There's that fishy smell and taste, and this is what they say if you start grilling it. You better have your kitchen very well vent ventilated, <laughs> or frying, if the same problem. So that's why I think I'm not going to grill, as MNS suggests in, in their instructions. Um, but instead, I'm going to poach them, you know, like like I found suggested um, by other uh, seasoned keeper consumers. So, I think that's going to be enough. So this will be gently fried in olive oil. And um, then I'm going to to poach my skippers as instructed, and I'm going to make scrambled eggs. So I think that's going to be delicious. Let's see how this turns out. Okay, I'm going to show you that you know what? Getting rid of this layer of plastic on top can be really tricky. I've just spent some time um, dealing with these corners. Oh, I can already smell that there's that fishy smell. So I'm going to put my butter in. Yeah, because I'm going to use it later. Originally, I thought this is maybe the butter for frying or grilling, but it's not. You know what? And don't grill or fry because your kitchen will smell like a fishery, like a fishmonger. <laughs> I mean, I can already smell. Well, it's not really terrible. I can say this is like mackerel, you know, like smoked, because this one is also smoked. Um, and from the research I found is that you can find them not necessarily smoked and not colored the way they're colored here. So in this case, they are in season and they're pale yellow, not, not dark like this one you've got here. Um, okay, here we are. Another butter. Mm, yeah, they do smell actually not too bad, but I reckon if you start frying them or grilling, that smell is going to literally overpower your kitchen. So here we are. So you see how this is not an easy trick, and obviously I don't want to, I don't want to kind of make any sharp moves. But this is, this requires an effort. Okay, here we are. That's done. Oh, this whole plastic smells. You know what? I actually like this smell. It's not as bad as some um, consumers of keepers described. Well, maybe this MNS. This is not just keepers. This is MNS keepers. So. Okay, in the meantime, I'm preparing my boiling water. Oh, it's already boiling. So I will be ready to place them in boiling water for five minutes in a sec. Okay, well, here we are. I've had this boiling water in this pan, frying pan, and this is what it looks like when you 
place them in this boiling water. It doesn't look pretty, but I'm really hoping that the taste is a lot... Um, can offer much much interesting much more interesting picture than what what you're seeing here so and they say it's just five minutes so they don't need heavy grilling um, or, or frying or poaching so here we are I'm going to put my timer for five minutes in the meantime I'm frying my um, parsnips here here they are parsnips and then I will prepare my um, my scrambled egg okay so I prepared one kippah and um, it's been five minutes and um, I do want to actually try it because um, another thing you need to be aware of is that keepers they do have still bones there are small bones in, in there, I don't know if you can see this tiny one so um, this is probably not for everyone and these bones can be difficult to get rid of so I just want to try what it tastes like yeah, and look the, there are tiny little bones everywhere mm, it tastes really nice and these tiny bones are so small, you can literally chew through them. Mmm, it's not bad. You know, the taste is reminiscent of mackerel, smoked mackerel. These bones, you know, you can confuse them for hairs even. Because they're that small. But you probably do need to chew them really, really well. So that they don't cause any trouble as they travel. So, it is pleasant. And I think this one isn't... Okay, let me put this butter. It isn't as fatty as I expected it to be. Well, that's because I guess this one was caught not in season. It is nevertheless very tasty. I do recommend it. If you're not afraid of these tiny bones, here we are. Well, you can take them off with your fingers. They are like little hairs, really. Um, they're really, really small. They are not likely to cause much harm, but you do probably need to chew them very thoroughly. So, this is it, kippers. Hmm, now I know. It's actually very easily cooked in the water, as I showed you. Um, as long as you don't fry them or grill them, because that will produce horrific smell. And you can have your poached eggs, or scrambled eggs, or vegetables with it. I imagine this will go nicely. So, there you are. Now I know what kippers are, and you know how best to eat them and cook them. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me wish you bon appetit, and we'll chat again soon.